Hey everyone, welcome to Jessica Payne Live. I am your host, Jessica Payne, and I am live. And you may notice this little background behind me has uh, shifted. A quick update, I am supposed to have a, an amazing guest on this morning, Gina Garcia, who's the amazing uh, entrepreneur and founder behind Tricaru. We're gonna hopefully have her join today. If not, um, I will keep you posted on that. In the meantime, I really wanted to honor the folks of you. Uh, hey Rob, how's it going? I love it, go painter, you like my biggest supporter. Guys, I know Rob Wheat from like years ago. So Rob, you and I could just have a whole conversation live if you want. Um, so shout out to Rob, he's amazing. If you ever need uh, media relations PR, hit me up because I know Rob and I get actually a ton of requests for PR all the time. I can put you in direct contact with Rob. He, uh, I know him from our years working with Nintendo. He's as good as it gets, right, Rob? Uh, so let me just show you here. So welcome everyone, sit down. If you're watching on the replay, thank you. Uh, I love hearing from you. Uh, last week I heard from a lovely watch, uh, a fan uh, in London, so that was lovely. I'm here in Los Angeles. If you're joining me for the first time, you might even be watching me on the replay over at YouTube. Uh, if you are, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you're on YouTube and you wonder where I am, you can click on the link to find me, jump over to Facebook, I actually air this show on Facebook. Uh, and you can find me over at Jessica Payne Official, which I'll show so you can find me here. We're just settling in. I've got a big cup of coffee. It's one of these days. Mm. So Gina just texted me. She's like, I'm coming, which is great. So um, I love this show. This is probably my, what, 10th, 11th show? I can't remember. I've been doing the show for a while now, and um, every show is a learning, a learning curve, as, as you do. I think um, I'm sort of comfortable winging it. I do prepare a lengthy agenda just because I like to be organized. Rob, you would know from our years working with big brands, it's, it pays to be organized. Um, but uh, what I've learned from this show and uh, what I'd like to convey to you is to just always have a plan B. Um, I've had a show perfectly planned before and then technical glitches. One time it was raining outside and it was almost pitch black in here, so I had to scramble for lighting. Uh, another one, I'll have drive-bys for my cat, so you'll see a big just tail just kind of cascade across the screen. So anything can happen in these live broadcasts, which I enjoy. Um, it's kind of like if you've ever taken an improv class, which I'll get back to that in a minute, uh, the, one of the biggest pieces of advice for improv class is like you can't plan because part of the, part of the doing improv is just like being in the moment. So if anything, this, this show, is therapy and practice for me to be in the moment. So I love that. So uh, again, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us live or on the replay. Um, I thought, well, we wait for Gina to join. I wanted to recap, I covered this a few weeks back, but I wanted to recap something really cool because I've got hard results for it. And um, I wanted to take you through an experiment I started to run at the beginning of, I would say October, and it's kind of taken me through this fall specifically around, you know, uh, live video, because if what you're hearing, and maybe you are running your own show, or you're watching this because you have an interest in, in live uh, video, you may be wondering if you're probably starting to hear it's the future of social media. And I couldn't agree more, I think, with the caveat that as long as we all don't turn into like Phil Donahue, as Chris Brogan, he's an amazing blogger, writer, influencer, he wrote a, he wrote a great article, I'll see if I can link to it in the comments. Um, as long as we don't use, as he says, sort of 1990s rules, <laughs> what I'd hate to do is jump on Facebook in like two months and just have a bunch of talking heads. It's like, there's a reason why I don't watch CNN anymore. It's because of that. So, um, but it's really interesting. I think there is, and I've got a, a bunch of guests coming on over the next few weeks who are gonna talk about it. Who are gonna talk about this huge trend, the surge to embrace live video on social media. You're gonna see it on Facebook for sure. Instagram, it's still a little clunky, but people are embracing the live element. Certainly with Twitter and Periscope and then YouTube, everyone's trying to get on the live streaming thing. If there's a company out there that can crack the nut of uh, creating one service that can stream you to all of your social media channels, 
they can write their ticket, I swear. So let me know if you've invented that. Um, and there's certainly other tools to make the process easy. But what, what you're seeing are a lot of people now have access to jump, jumping and jumping live, going live. And um, I've seen it embraced by coaches, realtors, um, digital marketers, branders like myself, experts, authors, um, comedians. I had a beautiful, uh, a fantastic uh, nurse comedian, Ursilia Pompilio, who has like the best name ever on a few weeks ago and she taught and, and she was on live. She's she's got a knack for performance anyway. She does a beautiful um stand up uh act. And um I had Karen Glasser on the last episode from Little White Lie Digital Network, who's fantastic. And it's been interesting to hear from them how live video has has impacted them. Someone like Karen, she's been going live for eons. She's actually she's as good as it gets in terms of of being a pro. So my, my whole point is you've probably noticed a ton more live videos popping up in your feed, which is great. Um, so anyway, back to my experiment. So I embraced this. I've been watching it just as a digital marketer. You're paying attention and trends come and go, fads come and go. So while people tend to kind of lurch forward and embrace the new tool, I'm totally, a, I'm such a skeptic and I'm really cynical because I've seen a lot of fads and apps and tech come and go. Anyone remember the Palm Pilot? Yeah. Um, anyone still use uh, Periscope? Didn't think so. So um, some stick, some don't. But I've seen that what's made live video stick is I use a platform called Be Live. They don't pay me. This is this is my own endorsement of it. That makes going live um, easier, and you have a talk show format. You can bring other people on. Uh, but then it it just I can do it right from my desktop, and I can sort of fly in information like, um, uh, like for example, this, like here's my YouTube, like I can just throw banners up like that, right? They make it look nice and they're spit and polish, which is nice. So one of the biggest trends you're gonna see going into next year is tons of people jumping on, on video, but being the skeptic that I am, I ran an experiment. And it's going into its, I think, 60th day. As we wrap the end of this month, it's, it's a good two months. And my, my theory was that if I went live, if I just focused all of my content on my, on my Facebook page to just video, posting about video, going live or promoting my show, or even linking to YouTube videos that I did, just video content, my, my question was, would this increase the engagement on my page? Um, I predicted it would, but only an experiment as I need facts would prove if I was, would prove or disprove that. And it's brilliant because I actually was proven uh, to be correct. Within the first week, I had over 100% increase in engagement. I think overall, um, and I'll see if I can punch up the numbers here. Uh, overall, it increased in engage, in engagement, engagement, uh, activity on the page, clicks to the page. I had a, um, I have a free ebook cheat sheet that you can click through on my on my uh, page profile. Those clicks uh, increased. So the answer to my question and why it's important for you is if you're struggling to get engagement on your Facebook page or social media for that matter, and you can even be a big brand. I've seen a lot of coaches and experts running their Facebook page. And they post all sorts of amazing content, but there's zero engagement, no likes, no shares, no comments. You see this on Instagram too, but I, I'm, I'm speaking specifically to you on Facebook because you're probably feeling this pain point. I hear it all the time. It's because people aren't seeing your content and that's no fault. It doesn't mean your content's not great. It's probably a list. It's probably excellent. But what uh, the secret to getting back in front of people really rests on sort of two fingers. And Karen and I spoke about this last episode. You have to embrace video. So whatever that means to you, whether it's it's shooting a live video on one of these using Facebook Live, that's like the best and maybe easiest thing for you to do. So I invite you today to shoot one. Go, go live for five minutes. Talk about news happening at your company or share three pieces of advice, actionable bite-sized pieces of advice. It's the best thing you can do just to get you used to using one of these or a webcam and Facebook Live. Facebook loves when you use their platform, right? Their whole goal is to keep you on the page. So if you are going live using Facebook Live, uh, they're gonna actually push that to the top of the feed. What does that mean? 
Well, if you're looking for engagement, you need people to see your content in order to engage it. So right now, you're competing with everybody else. But if you're on video, Facebook actually prefers that over other content. So that it prefers it over, it even prefers it to linking out to other videos on YouTube or linking to a blog post. And why? It's because Facebook doesn't like it when you send people away. So if you, if you wrap your head around that, what can I post on my profile or my page to keep people on Facebook? Facebook is always going to embrace that. So let me bring that back to why live video matters. So going live on Facebook using their built-in is, is probably the, the, the preferred uh, use of Facebook uh, at the moment. And because they like that, and, the, and the, um, uh, you've heard of the algorithm, uh, if, if Facebook knows that you're, that you're keeping people on the page, they're gonna push your content out onto other people's feeds, which is the big challenge. That's why no one's seeing your content. So you increase the probability of people seeing your content and then engaging with it, right? That's the home run. That, that to me is the easiest way to sort of crack the nut. If you're flatlining on your engagement right now, the easiest thing you can do is go live for five minutes. I don't care if nobody joins you live, just get used to it and, and send a signal to Facebook that you are embracing this new platform. And then try to do it at least once a week. This is like the baseline of what you can do. I don't care what you talk about. Just try to go, try to go uh, live. And I guarantee you're gonna have at least one or two people jump over, even the first time you go live out of curiosity. But keep doing it because that tells Facebook, hey, I'm embracing this new platform. And then of course, if you wrap a show around it or something regular, you're gonna get more and more eyeballs at, at least. Um, another thing you can do is use a platform like BeLive. Again, I'm, this is my own endorsement because I like the, the show. If you don't want to use Facebook Live's platform, which to me, it's a little limited. They're coming out with some new things um, with mentions you, you maybe have heard of. Um, I like to use BeLive because it allows me to kind of use a dashboard. Um, they have a free trial you can jump on. It's really, really cool. If you want more information, ask me. I'll, I'll, put, um, I'll put a link in the, the show. Um, Another uh, few other tricks I've learned that I'm just going to pass straight on to you. These aren't my tricks. These are ones that I've I've learned um, from the BeLive uh, community is um, if you want to link to a blog post, you can, uh, why not post it as a note? You know, you can post different things on Facebook. You can post it as a note. And uh, an idea uh, that, I, that, that I've seen and, then, and, and that I've had is, um, Rather than link out to a blog post, because again, you're telling Facebook, I'm leaving Facebook, they don't like that, post it as a note, like as an actual Facebook post. And what you can do is why not jump on your face on, on Facebook Live for a minute and talk for 60 seconds about what your blog post is about and then and then just link to that note on your page. It sounds really complicated, but what you're essentially doing is creating two little mini posts on your page that link to each other. And again, you're keeping people on Facebook. That's good. And one of them's a video. So try that, and um, if you wrap your head around it and, get in, and, and try to get ahead of it, you know, creating stuff like this is, is pretty simple. So again, what I want you to do is start thinking about how you can keep people on Facebook because at the end of the, the day, that's gonna be your secret to um, bringing those, those engagement numbers up. And again, this is based on um, a 30-day, now 60-day experiment where I have, I was putting out a ton of content, blog posts, I was linking to other YouTube channels, I was linking to other articles, you know, New York Times, whatever, which is still important. But again, we now know that sending people off of Facebook um, will kind of kill your engagement. So if you have engagement as a key objective, I'm not saying you still can't link to other articles. You need to, in, in, you know, in your trust and in, in in article sharing is one of the best things you can do to pass along information. However, don't make that your entire content strategy because if you're just sending people away from Facebook, they're not, there's just gonna be zero visibility on your engagement. That's a mouthful, but it's, um, it's helpful. It, it, it has helped me um, and I've uh, been able to sort of, like I said, uh, crack the nut. Um, we're gonna see if Gina can join us. She might not be able to get uh, to, to be able to join us to, today. That happens. I think she's uh, working through some technical difficulties. So we'll get her on in a future show. Um, what I can do is I can link to, she was on about a year ago, year, maybe over that. She was a guest on my podcast. So I'll link to that in the, the, um, the comment section of the show here. She's an amazing individual. She's got a beautiful story to tell. Um, 
like I said, she eats risk taking for breakfast. She inspires me because, and I mentioned this in the post, she, she has that entrepreneurial spirit in her veins. And while I would like to say I do, I wasn't born with that. Um, I'm quite comfortable being behind the scenes. So I shock myself that I do this weekly show, but I think it's because I'm just looking at a camera and I'm in the comfort of my own office. I'm fine. Uh, Gina like launches businesses and starts endeavors and is successful at it. And um, I, I deeply admire that because uh, as, as a generally risk averse person who's had to like retrain her brain, uh, it, it can be a little intimidating but she inspires me to sort of take risks. And um, one of the things we talk about a lot is something I'm really pushing out right now, uh, my own mantra, and that is real is greater than perfect. So Gina and I were gonna talk about this today, but I'll, but I'll kind of share it with you just a little light uh, version. And and when she comes back on, we, we can talk about it. You'll actually see this carry through uh, the show. It's real, real is greater than perfect and it, it it's really my own mantra that I kind of bang the drum for myself to hear. Uh, but I have, as I have sort of rolled it out in front of people and introduced the concept, they, they tend to like it. It used to be real is not perfect, but real is greater than perfect is now kind of my mantra going forward. And, and what I mean is we're always shooting for perfection and whatever that means to you in life and business and relationships. And I, and, and I think, you know, the media certainly doesn't help. We have this false notion of, of what success is. We have everyone telling us what to do, how to do it. And then you throw in things like the comparative mind. We're constantly comparing ourselves. Like, I get it. I'm in this space. I'm in a competitive industry. Um, I'm constantly seeing how other people are succeeding. And um, you, can, you can either take that in one or two ways. You can always compare yourself and, and get down on yourself for not being that other person. Or you can kind of lean into your lean back into your strengths. So whatever that means to you, if you're struggling, if if you're if you're a little down on yourself, if if you're if you're closing out the year and you feel like you're kind of low or 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 you feel like you're a little just a little frustrated in finding your footing. Maybe you're struggling to figure out kind of who you are, your unique self in a competitive landscape, or maybe you're struggling in a relationship, I always like to say, you know, real is greater than perfect. Because at the end of the day, if you're speaking your mind, if you're speaking your truth, if you're embracing your flaws, which is what I need to remember, um, it, it makes you who you are. And I don't mean to sound so like, <laughs> woo woo, we're out there. But it, it's true. At the end of the day, when we succeed on our own terms, being ourselves, there's no greater feeling in the world. It's tough though when we see everyone else around us succeeding and it's so it's easy to kind of go, well, why don't I just do what that person did? That doesn't mean you can't do that, but what you want to do is make sure that you're you're being yourself because let's say you are successful in your life and your relationship or your business. Five, ten years from now, you're gonna be someone else that's successful. And that's where you where I see with my clients. Uh, several things. They outgrow their company or their company outgrows them because they weren't aligned. They they were successful using someone else's playbook, which is totally fine, but they forgot to include themselves in that piece. So they've grown away from their company. Um, in relationships, including my own, it, it you, you start to sort of disappear. You might not be present in conversations because if you're not speaking from yourself or or speaking your truth, you're not you're not contributing to any relationship is 50 50 right so that's something that 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 you might feel another thing is for me which i'm reversing now it, it, and it goes back to a disconnect in your life or career if you're not checking in with yourself if you're not being real if you are kind of wrapping your identity or success around what other people are doing and you forget to include yourself in the piece you could still be successful but you're going to feel that lack of fulfillment and that's a big hairy beast. Um, that's something I felt. And it's only taken a few years to actually unpack what the heck that was. But it all came down to uh, the fact that I wasn't kind of tapping into who I was. Uh, and so my mantra is my mantra for you. Use this, steal this. Just remember, real is greater than perfect. Be yourself, be authentic, whatever that means to you. Speak your truth. 
Um, and if this resonates with you, even if you're watching this on the replay, comment, leave a comment. I'd love to hear. Or you can DM me. I get a lot of DMs uh, from you. Uh, and I don't think this is uh, just an American mantra or a, or, or a North American mantra. I, I think real is greater than perfect. Would and But you tell me. I think it would resonate no matter where you are. I know I have a lot of uh, viewers from ar around the world. So I'm curious what I'm curious and leave this in the comments. What does real is greater than perfect mean to you? Do you have an example of when you weren't real? What did that feel like? How did you recognize that you weren't? And when you start to apply being, you know, real is greater than perfect, what does that mean to you? I love the show. I could talk about it. I could talk about this all the time. And unfortunately, I don't think Gina is going to be able to join us. So Gina, I'm sorry. I think she's fighting the Chrome battle. Oh, Chrome, you feisty, feisty fiend. I think she's, I think she's just picture Gina with a shield and a sword right now fighting Chrome and like internet. I'm sending you love, Gina. I know you're probably, it's a gauntlet. Hopefully she hasn't thrown her laptop out the window or in the pool. I've been there, girl. Um, but anyway, so so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's uh, show. Uh, we did have Gina scheduled, but I think we're going to reschedule her. I'm going to put a link to the, her podcast. Uh, she was a guest on my show, like I said, at the at the top of the show. And it was a beautiful interview. It was really, really nice. Um, so you can learn a lot from her. One thing I did want to mention, because I do get questions about it. One thing we were going to talk about today, but we really have it. Real is greater than perfect can kind of yield into this. Um, a lot of what I talk about um, in front of groups, in front of students, and certainly to my clients is creating positive change. So I'm going to bang on about this forever, especially this time of year. Uh, yesterday was Giving Tuesday. You might be thinking of where you want to put your time and money, or you might just be setting New Year's resolutions for yourself, which it's the season of lofty goal setting. Like my, again, real is greater than perfect. Like set a real goal. <laughs> Don't don't set a New Year's resolution that you're not going to hit like the first couple of weeks in January because you're really setting the tone for the entire year. So just be my advice. Just be gentle with yourself. Set goals, but set realistic goals. Um, one big thing for me is uh, is how to. Oh, I see Gina. She might be joining us. I see her beautiful face. Um, hold that thought. Let me see if Gina can join us. You look great, girl. All right. Let's see if I can hear you okay. Put your earbuds in. Your volume. I'm going to have you come in. Let's see if we can bring her in. I love live. Hello. Hello. How are oh, you? She's here. Hey. Amazing. Good morning. I love your studio. Hey, thanks. Here, let me give you a proper. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Hold on. Let me get. Boom. Let me get some lighting done. There we go. Is this better? Yeah, that's better. I think. There we go. I was, I was going to wrap up, but now I don't have to. This is a main thing. So oh, my God. I left you hanging. But listen, you followed through. I followed through. Shut up. There you go. There we go. And there. folks, I'm loving like the purple palette we have going. This is amazing. Fantastic. Well, I uh, I was just talking about real is greater than perfect, which I'm so glad you joined because I'd rather talk to someone else about it than me talking all the time. I was talking about my little experiment in, in video and whatnot, but guys, I'm so excited. She's here. Gina Garcia. Welcome, welcome. Real, not perfect. <laughs> real, so, real perfect. yes. Everybody, real is greater than perfect. And real means, oh, hey, I'm fighting the battle with Chrome and internet and my laptop. And I'm here. I'm in it to win it. And here I am. You look great on camera, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Not that we're all surface minded, whatever, but we are two women. So it's good to acknowledge you look great. You have a good you have a great camera presence. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How about I got the camera to work, so um, yeah. I think Christy on that one. She brought in her computer that's newer and mine. Um, yeah, all, entrepreneurial. All hail. 
sometimes you just need to hail Christy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this is kind of perfect. Um, it's, it's almost like, thanks for joining us in the second half. But uh, so, folks, thanks for sticking with us. I might even splice this into two because, to be fair, you're the reason I'm on today. So, I'd rather talk to you. Let me give folks joining a really quick, a quick and proper introduction to you uh, because you deserve one. Everybody, friends, family, uh, and thanks for joining with us. Again, most of you are gonna watch it on the replay. This is Gina Garcia, Gina M. Garcia, the founder of Trikaroo, and she's gonna talk about what uh, uh, the amazingness that is. Gina, if you if you have listened to my podcast, you might recognize her voice. I think you were a guest about a year, probably maybe over a year ago. We did, um, I think like six months ago too. Yeah. Uh, I've been on, this is my third time with Jessica Payne. Listen, and now, guess who's gonna come on for a fourth and a fifth? One of these days, we're gonna be sitting in the same room. Exactly. And we're gonna be doing this together. Uh, so a proper introduction, Gina is, uh, one, I'm one of her biggest fans. Full disclosure, she is an amazing entrepreneur, the founder of Trikaroo, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, a, a veteran, uh, a filmmaker, which we will talk about, and a a fellow warrior in terms of that quest to, to be congruent. Uh, and you're on the bandwagon with me about being real, being how real is greater than perfect. I've got you on the show because, and I was just talking about it, you eat risk taking for breakfast. You are not afraid of risks. You not even a little bit. You like launched your first business as a child. Uh, and every day I still get up and go, can I do this? So I feel like you inspire me because you're simply not, I, I'm not saying you're afraid to fail, but you, you don't have what I think a lot of us have. Uh, and I, would, I was hoping you can impart your wisdom or just practical advice about how we, the folks who maybe weren't born with that entrepreneurial spirit, can wrap our heads around kind of embracing the risk as you kind of sort of naturally do. Um, but without further ado, everyone welcome Gina to the show. Welcome, welcome. Hi everybody. Hey, hey, hey. We're and um, so. and, and you're, 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 can I say calling in? You're streaming in from Florida, the sunny state of Florida. It's like Florida, California right now. Yeah, we're bi-coastal. Not bipolar, but bi-coastal. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Which bipolar is fine too. Yes, exactly. but you know we embrace <laughs> embrace all. So we are in two sun sunshiny, mm -hmm. orange juicy states. You are Absolutely. much more tan, much more tan than I am. So so Gina, I was thinking we could just kind of jump right into it. So a lot of my followers run their own businesses. They're either a coach or they they are their brand. So they have a strong personal brand or they run a business where they might not be the face of that brand, but they certainly are kind of looking at improving their brand, their digital marketing, uh, or just they like this, this, this concept of real and authentic. But I think all of us share this one thing where we kind of struggle day to day in terms of like putting on that entrepreneur hat. Right. My first question is, can anybody be an entrepreneur? No. See, she's honest. Okay, I would have, um, I would have, I would have probably said yes, or someone else would have said yes, and you're like, hell no. It, it, no. Expand on that. It, 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 it's, it's not easy. I, I think, I think we live in a world where everyone's so caught up with the idea of being an entrepreneur. I think there's more entrepreneurs than entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Most people aren't willing to dive in head first, jump in the pool, and figure out how to swim. And I think that's the real entrepreneurial endeavor is you could become an entrepreneur, um, but it takes time and it takes, it takes a sense of fearlessness, I guess. Um, fear's tough and most people are scared. And so diving in, um, can anybody be an entrepreneur? No. Can anybody be a business owner? Yes. Can anybody be successful in business? Absolutely. But, the creative side or the diving into entrepreneurship, like starting something from absolutely a thought in your head. Not everybody has that. Um, 
some people are born with it. Some people are brought up in it, but not everybody has that. But it doesn't mean you can't run an amazing business. Um, it just means that you're going that rather than the traditional entrepreneur wears a lot of hats, um, that they might need other people, um, other, other places, you know, more than one hat. Um, to come in to actually launch their business or their endeavor. No, going that rather than the traditional entrepreneur wears a lot of hats. Um, Got it. That they might need other people. Thank you for that. I think um, if if we here I am controls. Uh, I was just checking to see. I think I want to say hi to Christy because I think she's watching. Hello, hello, hello. Leave a comment. Ask a question. I was going to see if we had other guests too. Um, thank you for being so brutally honest because um, I think I was just watching uh, something last night and it was a round table. It was women entrepreneurs and um, somebody said, and I forget the name, but somebody said uh, being naive, being naive can almost um, be a blessing. It's sort of like, because the more, you know, the more knows, you know, or something. And I feel like, um, Part of being naive is is not is is maybe not asking the right questions or 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 not having clarity on what the reality is of the situation. So um, thank you for that. I think so. So what is your? Hold on, let me get us on both screens. Okay. So what is, what is your advice to? Um, what is your advice to people who may be wondering if they've got what it takes? What are you willing to sacrifice is, is the question because starting a business is you have to sacrifice um, regardless if it's um, and I consider myself a creative in the entrepreneurial side, um, whether it was like making my movie or starting Trikaroo or any of my previous businesses. Um, like I was living in, in sunny California and um, enjoying the West Coast and things like that. But I knew when I started Trikeru that since it was going to be a new brand, um, even though I love living in California and, and, and things like that, and um, we have wonderful mutual friends and having to leave that experience in my life, that I had to move back to Florida because of the cost of living, um, having a, uh, a little bit greater network because I grew up in, in, in Florida in the Orlando area. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had to go back to school. Um, and I know that sounds kind of corny because I, I had numerous other businesses, but I didn't have any money. I, I just got finished, um, making my film untold. I was broke making movies. Well, break you and especially if you self-fund it um, right but i was completely i was completely broke my car had broken down um transmission literally like fell out on the 405 um <laughs> my phone was getting turned off and i had a home back in florida and i was like you know i have a home in florida i was living in a warehouse in order to to make a movie um yeah. you know and, and and it was just a lot of struggle but i i believed in the product that i was creating and so I was like, okay, I'm going to move back to, to Florida. Um, at the time, the VA was doing a grant for us old people. If you're over 35, like put us back to work type thing. So we're going right, to educate right. you, um, which was called the VRAP. Um, and so I was able to go back to school and the money that they were giving me, I used it to rent a warehouse. I went to school and I actually entered the entrepreneurial program, which the teacher was like, why are you here? And I was like, well, you know, I figure I would have a group of people to look at my business plan um, and help me with my business plan. Um, and I would have money to pay the rent for my warehouse. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start this. So you have to sacrifice. Um, you have to sacrifice that latte at Starbucks and <laughs> Sorry, Starbucks. You have to sacrifice that going out to the movies all the time. Um, you have to sacrifice the, you know, I love sushi, but you can't have sushi every day. Like you right. have to be willing to give up to be able to gain. Like, what are you willing to give up to gain? 
Um, and it takes time. Like where I was four years ago, because technically Trikaru started September 13th, 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, and where I am now, uh, my vision board is complete. It's the craziest thing. It took me four years. Um, I'm in a, a beautiful, amazing house, and I'll show you my background pool. The river's back there, and I have this great, wonderful house. I, I have the fun car in the driveway, the, the, the ragtop BMW, and I'm going to sound like the craziest infomercial ever, but <laughs> I was willing to sacrifice it all to get it later, and that's what being an entrepreneur is. Like you have to save your money. You have to put all your pennies, nickels, dimes away and be able to buy new inventory. Um, you have to be able to, if, if, if it's, you're in a service industry industry, you have to show up and you have to sometimes pick a flight to go to a conference than it is to meet your friends out for dinner. So until you're willing to give up the little things that are really little things in the grand scheme of life, right? don't become an entrepreneur because you, there will be times you will go hungry. There will be times where you're questioning if you can make your car payment or your house payment and all those things. And that's not for everybody. You right, know, right. It's, it's, it's not for everybody. And it's not for every relationship. There were things as far as relationship wise, I didn't want to get into relationships with people because I was on this volatile roller coaster and that's not for everybody. So if you, if you're in a relationship and you have kids and, and things like that, take that in consideration because you may be risking their future too in your entrepreneurial endeavor. So my advice would be to stay doing what you're doing make the money to put it away to start your entrepreneurial endeavor. If you're working an eight hour day, you can get up early in the morning and start, you can do it after work. You can do it after your kids go to sleep. It's the same thing that, um, Brene Brown and El Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, they're like some of my favorite writers, um, talk about is how they became writers is they would do it after they were, they were paying their rent. And sometimes people forget they have to pay their rent. Right. And so unless you want to live in your car and do that crazy dream, I've done it. I've been there. I, I, I lived in a warehouse to make a movie and I had to build my shower out of PVC every day. So I, I that's not for everybody. That's, that's amazing. amazing. I feel, I feel like, like you, you um, that should be like on your, I can say your epitaph or something. Um, I'm hearing some feedback in your in your audio. Um, mute me on uh, mute me on Facebook if you if you can. I like the sound of my voice, but in stereo, that might annoy you. Uh, so, you guys, some really amazing ad advice from Gina. She's so real. Uh, you mentioned a wonderful company called Trikaru. I thought, can we spend a minute just explaining what that is, and then I'm actually going to show while you're talking. Um, your website because you've got so I love your videos on here uh, and I love the story because it's so much more than just well I'll have you explain it but you guys Trikaru is is inspires me because you're like an Elon Musk wrapped in a Gina Garcia package uh, <laughs> how you're think there's like a greater purpose to why you created Trikaru and everything so um, out of all these hats you wear you are the founder of Trikaru so can you can you tell the folks at home uh, what Trikaroo is and how it started. And Trikaroo is basically a, we are a small footprint electric passenger vehicle company. We make small footprint vehicles um, that are a cross between a golf cart, a bicycle, and a mobility scooter. Um, all of our products are made to carry two people or um, kind of the Trikaroo concept. It's, it's tricycle. Um, as in trike and kangaroo. Um, so it's, um, I created it from my family business and I'm going to have to stop for one second. Christy, can you get me your power plug? So that way I don't run out of power and we go dead. Um, is that I created it with the idea of wanting to give people an alternative transportation. 
we we are now living in communities that are close by um and you can go to the grocery store you can um take your kids to school you can go to your doctor's appointments and not have to get in a vehicle to do so the majority of people will get in their car 91 percent of americans will get in their car to go less than two miles a tricaru is for short tri trip transportation um like i said grocery store i just need the tip of it thank you my technical person's here um is that with tricaru it's a way to get around um it's the most cost efficient uh, form of transportation it uh, for a dollar you could go about 400 miles um, and it costs like nine to ten cents per charge and it's 40 miles on a charge so basically a dollar gets you 400 miles so it's cost efficient it's fun it gets you more in the community um, with all the technology that's going on we're getting so far away from our neighbors and as humans and it gets you a way to just to uh, get out on the road, talk to your neighbors, take your kids to school. So pretty much that's what trike real is. Um, it's a way to be more community. I love it. And there, um, I, I showed folks kind of a video as you were talking um, and I'll link to the website. If you're interested in trike real, you can go to trike um, It's, it's cool because, and I don't think most people know, I'm, I live in Los Angeles, so I'm very guilty of the two mile trip thing and burning a lot of gasoline. Although we are getting better as a city to find alternate modes of transportation. But I, like many people, have parents where mobility might start to become a real issue. And Absolutely. Um, baby boomer generation, they're forever young. Uh, they are not their parents' mm -hmm. parents. and um, and talk to me about um, your customers. Have there been any surprises in terms of people who who like Tricaru? Um, anything you want to share? Because um, I think this will inspire people. If you had an idea, mm -hmm. I, and, I, and I think I don't know if you shared it before, but you were you were you were over in Asia. You saw you saw kind of the um, the the what are they called? The um, tuk tuks, jeepneys, rickshaws. Yeah. Yeah, which a lot of us, if we've been on vacation, we've seen or we've taken. You saw, you saw an opportunity. You you had a vision. Well, that was a family getting. business. My my mom family. actually ran pedicabs and jeepneys in the Philippines in the fifties mm -hmm. and sixties. Um, when I opened my first bicycle shop, I had a a replica, a really ornate uh, pedicab that sat in my store, and a pedicab is a bicycle taxi rickshaw. Uh huh. And, we started to have people wanting to rent it for weddings and private parties. And that was like, Oh, light bulb. Um, right. Then I had um, Joel who owns um, a series of bars in downtown Orlando on wall street. He was one of my customers. I sold his, sold him a bike for his kids. And he was like, that's a great way to get rid of the drunks out of downtown at the end of the night. Huh. Right. Him out. And so that was that light bulb moment. And so I started, operating pedicabs and then my thing from coming from the bicycle industry was I wanted to make my own because of repairs and maintenance and I wanted to make it simple. Mm -hmm. So that evolution came eventually when I started having parents going, Hey, I want to take my kids to school. And so it went one step further. And so we started making a smaller version and then people said, I'm too lazy. I don't want to pedal. Or how about if I ride three miles out and I can't pedal my children back? That's or if so I have American. my mother on there. So American. But it's true. It's like yeah. And so then we started going electric. And then there's legislation that if you have a bicycle, you can't be on sidewalks in, in, in various cities. And so meeting with my lawyer, my lawyer was like, hey, if you take off the pedals and you make it narrow enough to go through a doorway, it, it's now ADA compliant. And if it's ADA compliant, it'll be the first passenger vehicle that you could drive 18 miles an hour on the road, like a golf cart and then drive it into your living room. Right. So the evolution came through and, and I tell people, cause everybody's like, so are you a designer? And I don't think I'm a designer. I think I'm a listener. And what I mean that is 
the, my company evolved based on being open to listening to my customers and what mm. their needs were. If you're not willing to listen to your customers and other people, don't go into business because your customers pay your paycheck and they will tell you what the needs are of your business and you have to be willing to listen. So I'm not a designer. I'm a listener. And I think for any entrepreneur, you need to like work on those skills as actually, you know, what do they say? You have, you have one mouth and two ears and that's because you're supposed to listen more than you speak. Mm -hmm. So listen to your customers and your evolution of your business will actually happen. So when I started and my customers being baby boomers, the, the entire thing is our, our flagship truck. Um, and it wasn't because of baby boomers. It's because kangaroos, the alpha male kangaroo is actually a boomer. So we have a boomer series of our trikes. Um, and that's all of our trikes that the drivers in the front and the passengers in the back. Um, and then we have a flyer series, which is a, is, is a female kangaroo and all of those have pouches. And then we finally did a small version, um, that a lot of people use for like traveling and flying or putting on boats. It is our only product that only takes one person. And we called it a wallaby because it's just a little kangaroo. So, we went with the idea of themes and I'm probably off topic as far as who my customer is, but what had happened in all this evolution is that my customer is a broader base of people. When mm -hmm. I first started off as a mom wanting to take her kid to school has now turned into baby boomers and car show people. Like we go to car shows and like this past weekend, I believe we sold 18 units in like two days. Congrats. Um, which was amazing. And I didn't even think car show people that go to car shows would have any interest in this like miniature vehicle, uh -huh. but they've banned golf carts at all the car shows nationwide. And a trikeroo, since it's ADA compliant, it could go through a doorway um, is one of the only pass. It's one of the only passenger vehicles that's allowed in all the car shows around the country. So our market has just, like huge it's literally exploded um but it was listening to my customers and it was dale and reggie and i ran into them this past weekend and you know they have one of our original boomers and they absolutely love it and they were wonderful little sales reps for me this weekend and it was kind of like a strange like harley thing because it yeah. was the first time we've done this event so many times now it was sure. the first time where I saw like 50 of my products all running around this little uh -huh. ecosystem and they were all coming by and like talking shop about their trike roos. And I'm like, this is insane. Like mm -hmm. um, from what was a crazy idea to actually have people that are just like enthralled with it and just love it. And they talk about it and they send me videos and they talk about how much more time they spend out and talking to their neighbors and doing things that they couldn't do on their bicycles. Like Reggie had, had, had double, uh, both of her knees replaced and, you know, and, and she loved to bike and she still gets that feeling. And, um, on, on my video, one of my videos, you, you showed, uh, one of my customers and, and his, his wife has Alzheimer's and we're actually in a book about it. And he wrote a book about, his, his, his journey uh, with Alzheimer's and how Trikaroo has now gotten his wife out of the house and they get to go to museums and, and, and see things and where in a car he didn't have that ability. So there's times that with the Trikaroo and they'll go around the, the you know, um, all over Washington, D.C. and she'll have glimpses of her coming back because there's this remembrance of things. She's, she might not be there all the time but it gives him those moments. And I, I think that's the best part of about Trikaroo. It gives people moments of just happy. And I love that. That's really beautiful. Thanks for, thanks for sharing because I think what you're, what you're so great at is um, giving people a, a visual of how, of the evolution, the discovery process and how, uh, I mean, I'm just seeing you surrounded by a fleet of like trikaroos 
of like, she's here. And like all of your people, like, like this overhead shot of like, she's here. And it's like, they surround you in like this tricru parade. But it's like, you, the beautiful thing about tricru is it's a physical product. So a lot of what I do is virtual. You have, so, 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 so to see your, pro so to see physically a space filled with something that you've brought to life uh, has got to be incredibly, um, incredibly fulfilling. But to your point, just, like we may have frozen i'm back um so i don't know how hey, much christy are you hearing anything is she still uh, live okay because it's going dead for me okay what i think i'm back are you back? back yeah okay can you hear let's see technical difficulties is she trying to talk to me yet i can see you loud and clear i'll bring you I'll drop you down. Okay, I hear you now. Fantastic. You okay. So what I was saying was you brought up a bunch of really good uh, points. And the first one is is to listen to your customers like Reggie. Because if you hadn't listened, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't have been open to or recognized opportunities. So, so to everyone at home, do that. Listen. Uh, it's, I'm, hear, I'm also hearing be flexible. Be ready to... Um, make changes or to further conversations. Um, and it sounds like the third one is, is be prepared to. It's gone down again. Be prepared to um, spot opportunities like uh, demand being created maybe in where it wasn't before. So I dropped Gina down for a minute. Let's see if we can get her on again. Uh, I'm seeing you live, girl, but I don't know if you can hear me. Christy had a great comment. I wanted to show it. Christy said, go Gina, y'all are great. Thank you so much, Christy, for that. <clears throat> Thank you for your support. Uh, she's behind the scenes. And I have to give Christy a shout out because I know that you've played a huge role. Uh, and uh, Team Gina, for sure. And uh, But thanks so much for your comment. It makes a huge, it makes a huge difference. Gina, should we try to bring you back on again? Let's see. Let's see. All right. Are you good? Can you hear? There's a little bit of a delay. I'm here. There's a little bit of a delay. So what I'll do is I'll do the best I can to lob you over questions. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, I am here. Great. I can't Gina, hear her, though. You're frozen on my screen. I can see you on Chrissy's screen. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, I am here. All right. So how about I'm going to chat you my questions. So you you start to answer my questions when you see them, because I think there's a little bit of a delay. But there is a chat box. So go ahead and start answering the questions. And I'll shut up. Yeah, there's like a 10 second delay. No big deal. Can you? Uh, why the heck are people so afraid to take risks? That's my first question. I think people are afraid to take risks because you can turn off the volume. Um, I think people are afraid to take risks because back to that original thing, they're not willing to lose it. Um, that's a very scary, scary place is when you're um, on that verge of losing it all. And it's interesting. I was, I was listening to Gary Vaynerchuk, um, uh, Vanner Nation, um, last night on my drive. And, you know, his, he, he makes a, a strong point. He's like, every day you should work to try to put yourself out of business. And that's that taking that risk. And because when you're doing it, it's less likely of somebody else putting you out of business. So taking those risks, um, the rewards can be amazing. Um, so I think people are afraid of taking those risks because it's the unknown. The unknown is freaking scary, you know, but also the unknown is something amazing. It could be, it could be that, you know, doing your own thing and not having to actually 
have somebody else determine your schedule. It's or your vac your you know your work schedule, your vacation, the time you spend with your family. So let me read the next question here because it's not popping up. Why do you think so many of us resist embracing our authentic selves? I think people don't want to embrace their authentic selves because they don't know who that is. Um, mm. And it, it's interesting because I, I think over the, the time of our friendship, um, Jessica, I've embraced my authentic self a lot more. And I, I want to say thank you for that. Um, knowing who you are inside, you really got to put a lot of work into that person. And most it goes back to the very beginning. If you're not willing to put in the work, you can't figure out who that person is. And the most beautiful person in the world is the person inside of you. And most people are afraid to, to see who that is. Um, they, they let other people determine who they are. And if, and if you look and you sit and you're calm, um, you could find the most amazing things and it's all within you. And, and you could be creative. You could be, you know, that next amazing filmmaker. You could be that great entrepreneur. Um, so embrace that authentic self because the person inside of you is absolutely amazing and beautiful. Um, I got a next question. Um, I cannot. Uh, I can really impact your business. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if. Uh, Jessica's actually reading these out loud or if I should be reading them out loud, but um, reread the question for the audience. Uh, cannot being real negatively impact your business? Absolutely. Um, just recently we have moved from Orlando to the new Port Ritchie, Port Ritchie area. And we had a hurricane, a big hurricane. Hurricane Irma had hit. Um, my business was closed down. We didn't have power. I didn't have power in my home. Um, it, it, it was terrible. Florida was a wreck. Um, and rather, and I, I had to tell customers because like we had issues with our warehouse. We just uh, moved into a new warehouse, and. Rather than my customers screaming and yelling because we couldn't get stuff shipped out, I said, here's the situation. We just got hit by Hurricane Irma. We've been closed down for 10 days. Like, getting a shower is tough because of hot water. Um, you know, having electric, being able to go online, check emails or anything like that, we're not able to do it because Spectrum, Bright House, can't get our internet up we could barely get down the roads because there's massive amounts of trees everywhere and debris. Um, and then on top of it, we had a scheduled move. So, and we moved seven U-Haul 26 foot trucks to our new business location. And we're still in the process of setting it up and, you know, there's employees moving and things like that. So rather than just trying to like fake it and I believe in the fake it till you make it, but, I had to be real and I had to be authentic and let customers know the truth. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have a customer that with her disability, the trikeroo isn't working out so much as far as the model she got. She wants to get a smaller unit because she needs to be more nimble and in, inside of stores because we do make larger units and we do make smaller units. She's like, you know, thank you for posting the situation with the hurricane. Thank you for posting the situation with your move. I understand. The the flip side to that could have been horrific. I want to do a chargeback. I hate my trikeru and all these things. Instead, it's we're going to make it work for you. Thank you for being considerate enough to understand what we're going through as a company. And I'm going to make it right. So that thing about being real, um, you need to be real, but you also need to show compassion for your consumers. So... I think um, the negatively impacting your business if you're not real, absolutely. You you have to you have to speak the truth, 100%. Um, not everything is gonna be perfect, 
Um, and there's times where our trikaroos are sometimes not perfect. They might, the batteries might not hold a charge because, you know, in, in, in the move, the things that are dated and stuff like that, you know, kind of got confused. So you, being real and then that's making things right. You always need to work on making people whole. Um, so next question. What can women do differently? Christy, can you get me that sign up there on the mantle? Can you get me the sign on the mantle? A friend got me this like the sign on, on the mantle and I have it on the mantle of my house and I absolutely love it. Um, and it says, of course, women don't work as hard as men. They get it right the first time. Um, and I love this, by the way, um, is that as women, um, and I've always been in a non-traditional uh, other role as far as in the military and in business and things like that, is what, as women, we could do differently. It's simple. Mm -hmm. Get it right the first time. <laughs> um, and I know that's hard to, to say that, but we're expected to fail. We're expected to not get it right. Um, choose your projects carefully. Um, and I'm going to reference um, Wonder Woman because um, my, my mentor in film is Patty Jenkins and she directed Wonder Woman. And if you... Um, saw Variety back in 2012, 2013, she was gonna direct Thor 2. And uh, it was an amazing opportunity for a, a woman, um, any filmmaker to have such a huge um, film. And it just didn't feel right for her um, at that time. And, um, and this is when she was mentoring me for Untold and she just, it just doesn't feel right. I, I, I believe I can have something that's better. And she had Wonder Woman and it was absolutely amazing. I'm not saying it because she's my mentor. I'm saying it because she put so much thought and energy and, and heart into that project. So as women, put all the heart you have into your projects, be specific with what you want to do um, and, and narrow your focus. Um, sometimes myself, I'm all over the place and ADD sits in but narrow your focus, know what you want and be authentic with it and be deliberate with your choices. Hey, there's Wonder Woman. <laughs> um, and uh, the cool part about that is now there's going to be a Wonder Woman too. And, you know, she's uh, as a mentor personally and as a woman, it was interesting because our the way our relationship and, and friendship, um, and, I mean, mentorship worked was I actually was trying to get her to direct my film. And she said she loved my script and she all, and I said, will you please direct it? And she says, absolutely not. And I was broken. I was heartbroken. I was like, I don't understand it. And she said, we need more women directors in Hollywood. And I think as women, we need to help other women um, with their endeavors, whether it's in being an entrepreneur, a creative, or filmmaker. Uh, we need to support each other. So as women, support other women. Um, that's how we succeed in this on this planet. So, And that's how we create more wonder women in the, out here. Okay, next question. This is fun. Thank you. What are today's customers looking in a brand? Let me see. Um, I think they're looking for something that's different. Um, I think they're looking for things that make them get out and enjoy things. So with a brand, and it's interesting because um, with Trikaroo, the idea was I wanted to show I wanted to show it in our logos, like the idea of taking two. I, I wanted um, my brand to be fun. Um, tr beforehand, um, before I rebranded Trikeroo, 
uh, I was in more of an industrial. We were selling more to commercial accounts and things like that. And so I wanted to, 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 with whatever brand you're creating, be specific in what you want that warm fuzzy to be. I wanted a warm fuzzy. I wanted the idea. Everyone, no one has anything to say bad about a kangaroo. Um, I wanted a warm fuzzy feeling. I wanted something that when you set it, it kind of makes you giggle or laugh. Like, you know, we'll have customers and like the last show, like that are customers of mine and they're yelling, Trikaroo! And like, what do I do on my Trikaroo? And like, you've got to have it be enjoyable for the customer. So if it's a restaurant, you know, be specific in what you're, what you're doing or you're selling or things like that or what your theme is. If it's a product, you know, create your product and, and, and have it be something that someone's going to understand or have something that it's going to cause people to have a question. Um, the nicest thing about Trikaroo, it's not so on the nose that it causes dialogue to happen. And that's awesome. Like we always have dialogue. What's a trikaroo? Well, and, and it gives you an opportunity to explain what you do. And also with the branding side of it, you want to have something that someone's going to remember. Um, maybe people might not remember trikaroo, like the name, but they remember the kangaroo. That's a kangaroo company. Um, so that's been a helpful thing for us. Now the next question. Um, let's talk about purpose. How important is it to integrate a calling or a mission into your business? It's very important. It's extremely important to have a mission in your business. So like our mission is to make mobility cooler. You know, um, we're not making grandma's scooters anymore. We're making mobility cooler. Hey, you're back. Awesome. So our, our mission is, to be honest, I would love to be able to, to replace the second car. I will never replace the first car. I'll leave that to Elon Musk. But I want to replace the second car in the household. Because the thing about it is we don't need two cars. If you're a, a, a two-person household or a family, you can trike a roo around and, and get around. And we have lots of customers that um, have replaced their second car. Um, so that's something beautiful in itself. Is that me ringing? Yes, it is. Let me turn that off. Um, because I'm supposed to be working. I am working. Um, and I will get back to you, whoever this is from Claremont, Florida. So your, your calling and your mission is very important. I think it's kind of funny that you say calling and my phone rings. Um, that's how I manifest. <laughs> Um, and can I speak about that for a second about manifesting? Yes. Um, you have to set out with an idea of what you want. And it's very important as any entrepreneur, creative filmmaker, um, you have to have a vision of what you want and you have to like stay true to that, whatever that vision is. So my manifesting, I have mad manifesting skills. You do. Um, and, uh, you know, you've seen me on my crazy little journey for a while. And, okay. and if you don't ask the universe what you want, the universe isn't going to know what you want. So um, it, it's interesting. I, I, I literally, this year, I manifested the exact car and how much I wanted to pay for it with the exact interior the exact RV I wanted to take to trade shows, the house that I wanted, where I wanted to live. And it's because I believed in what I was trying to, to obtain. And I'm not talking about stuff. Um, I, I can honestly say I manifested the, the, the special person in my life that's mm -hmm. here too. Um, it's because the, you, you got to like scream it at the top of your lungs sometimes and say, this is what I want. And I think that goes to that fear thing is yeah. sometimes people are afraid to ask for what they want, but in the, in world, in, in this world, you can't get what you want. If you don't ask, it's a little thing of, you have to ask, like if you wanted a glass of water at a restaurant, it's not just going to magically appear. You have to ask for it. If you want that margarita, it's not going to show. It's like, your life is like going to a restaurant 
and you might have the menu, but the it, the stuff off the menu isn't going to come to you until you ask the waiter or waitress to actually, you know, bring it. So do that with your life. You have to do that with your life. Ask the universe for what you want, and the universe just it might just listen. But so um, let me see what is. What's on the pipeline for you? What's coming up for you? I'm so excited about this one. <laughs> I'm going to be working out with that lady on the startup project right there. And the idea of the startup project is I've been, a, I've been an entrepreneur since I was six years old. I've started numerous <laughs> companies. I've sold them for a profit. I've also lost numerous com co companies is that most companies fail before they start because they don't know what they're doing. And I'm not saying I know what I'm doing, but I have a group of people. My team knows what they're doing. And the startup project is going to be a conference that we're going to have in different cities around the country and in London. Cause my girl over there wants to go back to London. Totally. And the objective is to help people start their business. And it's to get people in that mindset to be able to make a five to six figure income. I'm not going to make you a millionaire. I don't want to make those promises, but I, the promise that I do want to, to, to give to people is the idea of to be able to start their startup project correctly. And that's with accounting and that's with marketing and that's with branding, social media, my girl right there, all about social media is that you need those tools. And you need not to spend all your money before you start. Most people go broke. And I want from the very beginning talked about your money. You got to sacrifice. You got to sacrifice. You got to save. Most people spend it in the wrong directions on, oh, I got to have these crazy business cards and this website that costs $10,000. And that $10,000 website is going to make me millions of dollars. Get out of it. You're not going to make a million dollars. You know, you might, but the average person I guarantee you, if you start making a different of uh, of a, 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 a five figure income or six figure income, that will change your life. There is no lottery. There is no lottery. Stop buying the lottery ticket to instantly make you a millionaire. You can yeah. create your own wealth. You can create your own health. You can create your own destiny. But you have to do it correctly, and that's what the startup project's about. And because it hurts me to know that I have mutual friends that have started businesses and they've. I love my life coaches. I love my business coaches, yep. but they're sometimes taking you to a different step way ahead with not giving you the nitty gritty bare bones reality. I want to, when you come to the starter project, I want to talk more people out of starting their projects than into starting their projects because I hate when people waste money. It drives me insane. The amount of money that people waste in starting up their businesses because they have to, everybody out there, I love networking and I know that's your business and I know that you're hating what I'm saying right now, but all those people at those networking things are there to network, to get your money. They're there to take your money. They're there to sell your insurance. They're there to become your accountant. They're there to be your banker. They're there to give you loans on high interest rates. They're there to take your money. The idea of business is to keep your money. Stop spending your money and create your business. Sacrifice. That's what the starter project is going to be about. It's about knowing the proper tools, mo the most efficient tools to start your business, the right ways, the ways to network without having to, to spend ungodly amounts of money. Jessica over there is going to be talking about some mad social media skills and branding. She even helped me out a lot. I didn't put as much as my authentic self out there until I actually talked to this girl. And it has changed my business immensely because she was just like, hey, you got this cool, awesome, awesome story. Why can't I read it? Where is it? It's not on your website. Your blogging kind of sucks. Like, like, pick it up, girl. <laughs> like, she's very, like, to the point and matter of fact. And that's what business is. Because yeah. you don't get a second chance in business. If you ruin it, it takes forever to recover. So you got to make it right the first time. Yeah. Like, like, and, 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 and one last thing, because I know she needs to wrap it up. And I started this thing late. Is the sacrifice sometimes takes a huge loss to create a big win. I had one customer that couldn't, the trucking company had the audacity to tell me they couldn't deliver it to his house. 
They took my product, very expensive product, $3,500. They put it on their truck and they weren't willing to drop it off the last two blocks. And I'm not going to slam this company online, but you know who you are. The okay. last two blocks. This gentleman, because we sell a lot of products to, to people with disabilities, couldn't get it the last two blocks because it was on a dirt road. Two blocks, two blocks. So they sent it back to the factory uh, or back to the terminal, and they just said, hey, we can't deliver to this guy. This guy needed it. He, he, he was his, he was his, he had a disability and he was his brother's caretaker and they couldn't go the last two blocks. So what I did, and this was up in, up in Chicago, I jumped on a plane the very next day. I drove 10 hours to this middle of nowhere. They, they broke the product in half. They left the battery in one terminal and the product in another one and I delivered it. And that's the thing is it cost me a fortune. I had to rent a truck. I had to get on a plane. I had to get a hotel, but you know what? you have to do those sacrificing. And at that time is when we were just starting up. I didn't need a customer to slam me on the internet saying, I, I ordered this product, I spent $3,500 and they won't deliver it two blocks. It was that trucking company that wasn't willing to do it. So you gotta be willing to take it to that next step and like blow your customer's minds because that's what's gonna make you in business. So back to the beginning, is everybody entrepreneur? Absolutely not. But if you're willing to blow someone's mind by your actions of taking care of them, you're an entrepreneur. Sage advice from the queen. Um, seriously, I think we're actually back in real time. So, I, so if you were joining a little bit during Gina's talk, I've been quiet but on purpose because we had a time delay. But, um, but it was perfect because I just like giving you the floor. Um, that, those are the perfect words, I think, to wrap up on. We covered a lot, I think. Um, so for all of you just tuning in, and you know, Gina is the real deal. If you're interested in her story um, about Tri-Career or whatnot, you can always find her on her website or on social. On Facebook, she's at Tri-Career, uh, and I'll put the the website as well. It's tricaroo.com. Gina is an amazing person. Watch this space. I'm so excited that you mentioned the startup project, by the way. <laughs> So absolutely. Uh, it's 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 so exciting. So watch this space for that, folks, because um, I think, Gina, next time you're on, we're I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, so for launching, I'm going to do the DAP. Totally. And I'll do the Wonder Woman. Wait, let's try Wonder to get Woman. it. In, let's do the, that in the screen. This will be our. Yeah. Because the startup uh, project is the Justice League of Business. I'm going to give you a high five here. Let's high five in our windows. Here, this way. Go. All right, am I over here? Yeah, oh, ready here. and go. Dude. Dude, there we go. Yeah, say that again. It is the Justice the, the, League. The, the, the startup project is the Justice League of business. Everybody brings these mad superpower skills in the business. And boom, we save the entrepreneur from themselves. There we go. See what I mean? She can just think of that on the spot. Like I'd still be, and listen, we have different styles and I embrace it. But so to bring it back to the very beginning, Gina is the embodiment, the physical embodiment of an entrepreneur. She's got that spirit running through her veins. If you're like me and you kind of struggle, I wish I could tap that every day. I struggle. But the beautiful thing about, and you spoke about this, Gina, is the beautiful thing about our collaboration and our friendship is especially as women supporting other women, I know that real is greater than perfect. And so my realness is acknowledging I don't have that entre all of that entrepreneurial amazing gifts that you were born with, but you can inspire me and encourage me to take some of that on board and vice versa. So um, I think my parting words to anyone watching today is it, it sounds like recognize your strengths, listen, uh, have a mission, have a purpose, have a vision, and be true to yourself because it sounds like, as we all know, being an entrepreneur, running a business, or even just developing relationships can be really challenging. But above all, Gina is a, is, is a, a perfect example of, of, of recognizing opportunities, either in real time or, or just sticking to your guns and being true and not deviating from, from your mission. Guns, Wonder Woman, Justice League, I feel like, <laughs> We're like a really bad web series version of that. <laughs> um, 
So Gina, I'm going to let you go. Again, for those of you watching on the replay, I'm going to link to Gina's website where you can find her. If there's anything you do today, visit the, visit her website. I mean, it's like kind of a plug, but it's like, I have baby boomer parents. It's Christmas. I don't know. Check out Tri Crew. It might be the best thing that you, you've bought your family in a while. Uh, or at least follow her on Facebook at Tri Crew. Um, she's got some amazing posts she's putting out. And so watch this space. Gina, any parting words before I, I let you go? Do your ha everybody your hashtag for 2018. My banker hashtag for me was do Gina to uh, hashtag do Gina 2017. And that was my mission. So do you in 2018, do your mission, set your goals and tell the universe exactly what you want. Tell that like tell the universe. Because the universe will listen to you. So do you in 2018. Hashtag. Woo. I love that. Yeah, because like you said, Gene is a good listener, but the universe is a, is a good listener too. It's and what you put out, yeah, and what you put out in the world, it responds to. So Gina, Whoa, one more thing. beautiful. One more thing. Yeah. Don't say no. Yes. The no's and the knots, the universe will give you the no's and the knots. Real which, not perfect. Which Don't is why, the knot in, which in is there. now why it is real is real. greater than perfect. perfect. So Gina schooled me as she does because she's a trusted peer, friend, colleague, Wonder Woman, Justice League member. I had real is, real is not perfect. And she's like, the universe here is not. And I kind of wrestled. And then I was like, at the end of the day, I was like, she's so right. So that's why I'm saying real is greater than perfect because the it's a mantra and it's just semantics. It's just tweaking, but you're so right about the words have power, right? So in your conversations, in your relationships, in your intentions, take Gina's advice. Uh, if you're including a no or a not, try to, to reframe that and shift the energy because the universe is listening. I love that. Absolutely. See, back to you. Back to you. Back to you. <laughs> So uh, I love Gina. She's amazing. Follow her. Follow her adventure. Watch this space. Gina, thank you so much for joining. For you, you, Of course, Justice League, you were able to battle Chrome and win. And I'm just <laughs> thankful you were able to join us at all from beautiful, sunny Florida. Absolutely. You're a few hours ahead. So I'm going to let you uh, return that call from a value customer. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Gina. All right. Absolutely. You have a great day out there. You too. Bye. Bye. Wonder Woman. Gina Garcia. <laughs> she's amazing. Uh, Gina Garcia, everyone. She She's fantastic. Uh, Trikaroo.com is her amazing uh, creation, amazing uh, business. Um, I want one of those things, man. And they go fast. Watch the space. One of these days, you're going to see video of me and, and Gina in Florida, maybe doing a little race. It'll be the slowest, fastest race ever, and it'll be totally safe. But, or maybe like one of those cone, like obstacle courses. I just want to know if I can like, I just want to ride one. Um, so she's amazing. She'll definitely be on again. Uh, for those of you who have been watching since the top of the hour, thank you, because I think we've been on for a bit. Uh, if you have been just joining us, I'm going to put a timestamp in the comments because I kicked off the first part of this broadcast just talking about an experiment. But if you want to fast forward to Gina, there will be a timestamp in the comments. Uh, really, really quickly, uh, a lot of you have been asking, where can I get my free cheat sheet? So, so I didn't want to forget that. I mentioned this in every uh, broadcast and I wanted to uh, link to it today. A lot of what I do, in fact, pretty much my entire purpose is to create positive change. I've been doing this for a while and uh, I believe my time on this planet is to do one thing and that's to create a uh, positive change. So here's what I, what I wanna make sure you guys know about. I'll link to this in the comments, but I do have a free cheat sheet, which is how to inspire action on it's uh, how to inspire action on social media in five simple steps. You can use this in life or business. Uh, you can how to inspire action period in five simple steps. It's a free cheat sheet. Uh, you can download it. 
Uh, it's five simple steps to memorize. You can seriously memorize it like on your hand in a minute or two. Uh, and this is where my conversations with clients start, with friends start, with colleagues. And it answers the question, how can I create positive change in my business and what I'm doing? Because uh, my mission, like Gina mentioned, my higher calling is to make sure that whatever we do in life or business has some sort of positive impact. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to make you money, although that's a byproduct of what I do. Uh, I'm not just here to get your brand awareness. What I'm here to do is to help you create that impact, that, the reason why you get up in the morning. So it's exactly what Gina said. So if you're curious, like, where to start that conversation, because it's kind of a big one. You're like, well, I don't know how to create positive impact. Here's a free cheat sheet. It gets you on my list. I actually follow it up with a few little goodies and stuff so that you can starting today be like, all right, I'm going to put purpose behind every single second I spend on social media or in my business so that I can get that fulfillment piece back. You might be interested in it. You might not be. But I do get a lot of questions about it. So I'll put a link in the comments, download it. It'll take you two seconds to read it. And I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it. Enjoy it. Then you get on my mailing list because I've got a few fun little announcements coming along the way. But at that point, I'm going to let you guys go because you've been here with me for a while. A, co a couple of housekeeping tips. We've got some amazing guests coming up. I'm super excited. Um, let me put myself back on the screen. Boom. We have uh, a couple of uh, more guests throughout the year. And then I've got my entire January booked. We've got marketers, live streaming experts, entrepreneurs. Um, I think I've got a health and wellness coach, too. So. They're all going to be talking about this amazing thing. Real is greater than perfect using their real, tangible, teachable moments so that you guys can kind of live your best selves and kick ass in business. That's why else am I here? So thanks for sticking around. Thanks, Gina. Again, any questions, DM me. You can find me on social media. If you're watching again over on YouTube, jump to Facebook. I am at Jessica Payne official. I'll put my little handle there. Where is it? Here I am. If you're watching on YouTube, Boom. You can find me there on Facebook. Jump over, subscribe, sign up, and then you won't miss an episode. Other than that, thanks for watching Jessica Payne Live. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Christy, Nicole, Rob, for all your amazing comments. You rock. Uh, and thanks, Gina, again. I'll see you guys next week. Au revoir. So long. Farewell. Thank you, technology and no glitches. Bye. Nice little wave from Gina. Do, 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 do.